All right, it is time for the OTR pop quiz, everybody's favorite segment. Well, at least it's ours. I don't know. All right, are you ready? I think. Okay. Well, th these aren't too hard. Okay. We went over them yesterday. All right, it's been a while since a Republican held the office of state auditor, but how long ago was it? Are we talking the 1920s, the 1940s, or the 1960s? I know this very well. It was Russell Wood in 1941. Look at that. Yeah. 1939 to 1941. Yeah. He is correct. Shocking. All right. You are obviously very well acquainted. Question number two with the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum and the infamous art heist there. Gardner herself was a turn of the century iconoclast, one shocking Boston society by wearing a headband to a Boston Symphony concert supporting a particular cause. What cause was it? A, women's suffrage, B, free love, or C, the Boston Red Sox? Oh, the, the headband? Yes. It actually said, oh, you Red Sox on it. <laughs> we used to wow. have a band around the building. It said, oh, you Red Sox. Two yeah. for two. Too easy, these questions. Yes. Too easy. <laughs> All right. Vermeer's The Concert, one of the stolen Gardner paintings, of course. Seat of my dreams. Yeah, valued at more than $250 million at least. All right, so we've got a true or false question for you. Uh, when Vermeer died at age 43, he was penniless, leaving his wife and children in debt. Is that true or false? Sadly true, but what he left his wife were a bunch of his paintings, which now would be probably over a billion dollars worth of paintings, but at the time they, they paid for bread. He's right. Paintings. Three for three. We should have made these tougher. I know. <laughs> Let's, all right, here's your last chance. All right, you are a graduate, of course, of the University of Rhode Island. Right. So is a network news correspondent known for her international reporting. So who are we talking about? A lot of these have local connections here. We're talking about Christian Amanpour, Leslie Stahl, or Martha Raddatz. Christian lived in the same dorm I did, Ellery <laughs> Hall. Oh my gosh. That's four for four. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to redo these questions and re well <laughs> redo done. the show here. You Thank got you. It right. Thanks. Unbelievable. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, speaking of money, you haven't raised much money for this race. In fact, you have less than 2% of the money in the bank right now that both of your Democratic opponents have um, in their war chest. Regardless of who wins the Democratic primary, how do you plan to compete? Even though they may be spending a lot of this money for the primary, the fact that they have these names and they have these connections might make it a lot easier for them to raise bigger bucks when they run against you in the fall. Well, it's a great question, and I can answer it uh, well. At first, they started a lot earlier than I did, so yes, um, they, they do have more than I do. But when you look at month by month, for instance, this last month, May, that uh, just closed, we did as well or better than the Democrats did in fundraising. And I expect that to, to not just continue, but to grow exponentially. We, we're seeing a, um, a snowballing support that I'm really encouraged by. You're right, they will be spending a lot of money against each other this summer, while I'm, I continue to raise and get ready to take uh, on whoever wins in September. And will Charlie Baker continue to help you raise money? Well, the governor's endorsed me, which is an incredible honor. Right. And I believe that he'll I hope that he'll continue to attend fundraisers that I have. I hope the lieutenant governor will. And um, I think they have every reason to support me. I'm honored by it. Oh, you mentioned his endorsement. He, the governor has been a little stingy as he heads out the door with his endorsements, at least so far this year. You got one. Mm -hmm. What would you say, how has he done handling this pandemic? There certainly have been some bumps in the road. The tease finances we talked about a little bit, the unemployment fraud and kind of the unemployment rollout. I, I mean, we, I still get emails from people who say they're waiting for unemployment from a year ago that never came through. That agency seems totally overwhelmed. How's he done? Has he done well enough? I think he's done very well. And the reason I say that is because when you look across the country, anybody who had a role in this pandemic response, no one was prepared for it. And how could you be? We as citizens weren't prepared for it. I think the governor made wise decisions. I think he put human life first. That was his priority. And I think that he acted earnestly. He didn't play politics with it like we saw other governors around the country do. So I was impressed with, with the governor's Has response. Has he reopened the state fast enough, though? I mean, we still also get reports of state workers who are not in the office every day uh, when private companies in some cases now are. Is the state open? Are all the agencies operating at a level they should be? Yes, but remember, some of those decisions are made at the office sure. level. So it's not the governor saying keep these people home. I think he's been very smart about where are there things that in retrospect I think he could have done differently or that or, or does he think he could have done differently without a question but I think he always placed human life at 
at, uh, at a premium here, and I'm proud of the work he did. And you never felt that there were too many mandates either on uh, the state level as well as the local levels? No, no. I felt there were times when I felt, especially at the local level, I, I live in Boston, I thought some of them were a little too stringent. I thought we were lagging other cities and towns. But overall, when I, if I try to step into the position of the executive making these decisions, especially early on when it was seemed like life or death, um, it's hard for me to criticize them with hindsight. All right, our thanks again to Anthony Amore, Republican candidate for state auditor. Good to see you. Thanks Thank for you coming very much. in. Thanks Enjoy for having the me. Sunday. Thank you, Janet. Thanks for being here.